Okay, look at this. My first ever game I made in Amos when I was 16 years old. Boy, it was called. Here's the title screen. Would have made in good old deluxe paint on the Amiga. Here's the controls. Here's the setup, my little guy. So let's have a go. Here we go. Level 1, the countryside, because games have to have levels, and that's how it works. Here's my little guy in a scooter that makes a funny noise when you jump. Jumping over things. Oh no, his scooter's gone, and now he has to run. You'll see I could barely draw. I could not animate at all, which is why his legs do a funny sort of what's meant to be a cartoony pinwheel sort of motion to disguise the fact that I had no idea how to actually animate something walking. Um, later on, I would actually work out how to animate things that worked, uh, that walked, but not for this first little attempt. There we go. Jump over some spikes with a different sound effect for the jumping. Get some points, which are absolutely meaningless. It's not like there are high scores or tables or anything like that. I just put in scoring because it was a game, and games have to you have to score points in them. Here we go, jumping, jumping. And here it gets tricky because you have to jump the two spikes and then speed up. And oh no, I got it wrong. Because I couldn't figure out a way of actually making it challenging if you were properly in control of the little guy. I just made it oh well, you can run at two different speeds and that way it comes up make, makes things a little bit difficult having to time things sometimes. So let's, let's, let's try that again. We have to start slow, slow, and then speed up and jump straight out. There we go. So next level, what have you got now? More of those bloody dragons, but they're easy to jump now that I'm on the foot instead of on a great big bike. And then the pendulum thingy, which was always a pain in the bum. You had to time the run directly under it. Oh, first try. There we go. Another spike, just because I ran out of ideas for what to put on that level, I guess. Now, I remember this one. The trick was you have to jump both the spikes at the same time instead of trying to do them one after the other, and then jump the water and run and jump things. There we go. Finish that one. And that annoying noise means that I completed the level. And I got to go on to the next one, which was the graveyard, because I like ghosts and goblins and games like that. And now you're on a pogo stick for no real reason. I just thought it was another easy way of making him move without actually having to animate him in any manner that resembles a living creature. Oh no, hit the skull. Here's my little gravestone, which actually looks in place in the graveyard level. Okay, pogo stick, and time to run under the lightning bolt, and run under the skull, can I do it this time? There we go. And oh, the vampire, the good old vampire who sort of teleports around the place a little bit and makes a nuisance of himself. And jump the thing, oh, but I've timed it all wrong and the thing got me on the way back. Oh, and it's game over. Well, I can't be bothered doing that all over again. Um, yeah, there was a, there was a very sort of basic, I think, end sequence I had once you got after after the graveyard. I didn't didn't bother doing any more levels than that, where you run up to the big robot and there's a button there that you push and he blows up and then you get a congratulations screen and that was the end of it. Um, and that was the first game I ever made. Obviously, I actually did make ones that were a little bit better than that in the future. Not a lot better, but what can you do? But there you go, preserved like amber on the internet, forever and evermore.